Hey y'all, TRG here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be going over the likelihood of severe weather today and tomorrow across portions of the Mid-Atlantic, as well as talking about the potential for catastrophic flash flooding today. Let's go right on into today's video. Starting out with the current satellite imagery across the lower 48 US, we have a lot of cloud cover that is currently ongoing across much of the Midwest, back out into the central and southeastern United States, associated with a big trough and a cold front that is currently making its way across portions of Tennessee, Kentucky. That is going to be the initiating factor for thunderstorms later on this afternoon as we go east of the Appalachians. Also, some clouds back out here in portions of the north central plains where we're going to end up with another severe weather event later on today as well as into tomorrow. Current radar imagery across the U.S., not really much in the wake of heavy rain. We have some heavy rain across Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. None of this is severe. None of it is notable at the moment. So just really some general thunderstorms that aren't going to cause much of an issue at the moment, but that will change as we go later on into the afternoon and evening hours. There's two different slight risks for severe weather. Level 2 out of 5 is in effect for today. The primary one is going to be out here in North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, where we have a very large chance to see widespread 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. Some gusts could approach as high as 75 miles per hour. And I do think by the time you're watching this video, likely around 12, 1230 Eastern time, they're probably going to upgrade this to an enhanced risk in Virginia and North Carolina for damaging winds. I'm quite confident we will see 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. So we'll see if they end up upgrading it. That all comes down to confidence, which I don't know how much confidence they have, but my personal confidence is very high in the opportunity for widespread 60 to 70 mile an hour winds, mainly across portions of Virginia and back down into North Carolina. I think we'll see a big line form. We'll talk about that on the model runs in just a second. Back up here in South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, this is our best opportunity to see a tornado today as well as the best chance for large hail today. For probabilities, we've got a pretty large 2% tornado risk, a decent sized 15 significant wind, and a pretty decent sized 15 significant hail. They have upgraded the hail risk back out here in the mid-Atlantic. It is a pretty large 5% hail risk no tornado risk at the moment and then we also have that large 15 percent that i think could be upgraded to a 30 percent wind risk for today tomorrow we have a slight risk for severe weather across virginia north carolina south carolina and georgia that is going to be mainly for the opportunity of damaging winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour hail shouldn't be an issue and same for tornadoes shouldn't be an issue for tomorrow so main threat is wind two different slight risks back up here one in north dakota one back down in nebraska and kansas there is the chance for a spin-up tornado out here as well as pretty widespread damage damaging winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour, and we also could see a large hailstone up to about an inch and a half in diameter. Before we get on into the rest of today's video, I ask that you guys hit that like button, share this video with your family, friends, social media, and hit that subscribe button with the notification bell set to all so you can help us get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of July. Let's go right back on into today's video. Day three, the severe chance does decrease slightly. Right now, we're at a marginal risk, level one out of five for a very large chunk of the U.S. Minnesota, Wisconsin, even into Michigan, all the way back down into New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, with a secondary marginal out there in the mid-Atlantic into the northeastern U.S. US. Should be mainly for the chance of some damaging winds, maybe some small hail. Could see a brief tornado possibly back out there in Iowa, Wisconsin, no far northwest Illinois. But at the moment, right now, doesn't look like much of a notable severe weather threat going into Friday. Now let's take a look at the HRRR out here for the Mid-Atlantic for today. We're going to start seeing a very large increase in opportunity for severe storms starting about 2, 3 p.m. Eastern time across much of the eastern Appalachians. Main threat again will be 60 mile an hour winds and then the chance for 70 to 75 mile an hour winds will really start to increase after supper. So we're looking at mainly after 5 p.m. The peak activity should be 5 through 8 p.m. Eastern time where we'll see widespread severe storms, possibly some up to 70 to 80 miles per hour. Wouldn't rule out that 80 mile an hour severe today, but it doesn't seem likely that we will see 80 mile an hour winds. That's just a possibility. And then as we go into 7, 8 o'clock late tonight, that's when these storms are still going to be peaking, likely beginning to weaken in intensity as they move east into Central NC, southeastern Virginia, into northern Delaware, western New Jersey. That's when these should start to weaken. 9, 10 o'clock, we're still going to have severe storms throughout the rest of the day into the night hours even at 11 p.m we're probably still going to have some severe storms 
out here in Delaware, North Carolina, and Virginia. And then finally, it's only after midnight that these storms really start to weaken well below the severe status. So all this stuff should really be weakening past midnight. Again, the peak activity, first storms fire 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Peak is from about 5 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then those storms continue to weaken from about 8 to midnight. And then once we hit midnight, it looks like all these storms should be sub-severe. I do want to mention, I won't fully rule out the opportunity of a tornado today. There's actually quite a widespread amount of low-end tornado ingredients across much of our slight risk area today. So I wouldn't rule out a spin-up tornado anywhere from South Central Pennsylvania, Western New Jersey, all the way through South Central uh, North Carolina there. So also keep an eye on the risk for a brief tornado, but that main threat will remain as widespread 60 to 70 mile an hour winds with gusts upwards of 75 to 80 miles per hour. And then going into tomorrow, it's going to be a similar setup, less of a tornado threat and less of a hail threat, but we will still see very widespread 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gust across much of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, into Georgia. And then as we go towards about five o'clock tomorrow, this is our best chance to see 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gust. Probably best chance is going to be back out in South Carolina, Southwest North Carolina. So that's going to be our best opportunity to see gusts up to 70 mile per hour winds. Not as organized of a line, but we could could still see a gust of 75 to 80 if we do manage to see any Boeing segments formed in South Central North Carolina or Northern South Carolina. So we'll keep an eye on that for tomorrow as well. But the main threat, definitely wind gusts of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Maybe a gust up to 75 if we could see a good Boeing segment. Hail shouldn't be much of an issue. And then just a quick look at our tornado ingredients. You can see we really don't have any good tornado ingredients tomorrow. The HRRR does have a little area of tornado ingredients here with an MCS in Southern North Carolina, but this is just one model run, so that probably won't happen. And then back out in North Dakota for today, we're going to see a couple supercells begin to fire, mainly after the supper time, mainly after 5, 6 o'clock time frame. We'll see a couple supercells fire in Southern North Dakota, into South Dakota, and even into Nebraska. Those should quickly weaken. I really don't expect too much out of this event. I just think we'll see some isolated damaging winds, some isolated small to large hail. Nebraska also could see some some damaging winds later on this evening, even into the overnight hours. This is about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Could see some damaging winds there as well. And then heading on into tomorrow, really not sure what's going to play out tomorrow, but it looks like we're going to have a lot of spin in the atmosphere out here. So we should be able to see a lot of thunderstorms, maybe even a supercell or two. And if you look at the tornado ingredients, my, that is a very high-end environment for tornadoes. So definitely a lot of lower-level wind shear out there, but... Um, looks like there probably is going to be some issues with overconvection, but we could see a couple tornadoes tomorrow if we see a little bit better of supercell development. Right now, this looks too messy to be a good tornado threat, but man, definitely a lot of spin out in that atmosphere. Very good ingredients in eastern Nebraska for tomorrow, so we'll keep an eye on that. We may end up seeing uh, that 2% tornado risk. I think it's currently in western Nebraska. Probably going to get expanded into more of central and eastern Nebraska as we go throughout the rest of the SBC updates into tomorrow. And then using the NAM 3K model run, we should see a lot of thunderstorms fire on Friday. We will likely see a slight risk for severe weather introduced across eastern Nebraska, southeastern South Dakota, western Iowa, into southwestern Minnesota. If we take a look at the tornado ingredients, it's actually still pretty high. You can see there is a very good amount of spin in the atmosphere, really good low pressure, really strong spin in the atmosphere around that central low pressure and there is a lot of thunderstorms around and even on top of that low so it looks like over convection is going to be the main issue in terms of keeping that tornado threat down hopefully we see a lot of that over convection but i think we could see a couple tornadoes tomorrow and then probably friday looks to be the best chance for tornadoes going out there into western iowa and eastern nebraska pending on how that messy storm mode looks as we go throughout the evening and afternoon as well hours there uh, mainly from four o'clock looks like from from 4 o'clock to about 8 p.m. Eastern uh, looks to be that main severe threat across eastern Nebraska and actually maybe much of Iowa. That looks pretty good, so we'll need to keep a close eye on that for any future uptrends. That is uh, definitely a good risk for severe storms. Plenty of moisture, uh, temperature dew point spread won't be an issue, plenty of instability. Not the best lower level um, wind shear there, but still 
you know, if we have any cells that can latch on to a good amount of wind shear out there, then we could easily see a couple tornadoes. So going to watch that a little bit closer. Looks like a pretty good risk there on Friday. I do want to mention there's a chance for tropical cyclone formation going into July 16th through the 22nd. There's a chance for a tropical system to try to spin up around that time frame in the northern Gulf. Could be near the coastlines of Texas all the way over to Florida. So just keep an eye on it. Doesn't look like anything crazy at the moment, but just wanted to note, keep an eye on that as we go throughout the rest of the middle of July into the latter half of July. I do want to mention the risk for flash flooding. There is a chance for catastrophic flash flooding today, specifically in the red area, which is a level three out of four moderate risk for flooding. Goes all the way from Greensboro, Durham, Raleigh, and central North Carolina, all the way back up into central Virginia, including cities like Roanoke, Lynchburg, and Richmond, even including the D.C. and Baltimore area up there in Maryland, also including a very populated metro of Philadelphia and southeastern PA, also into southwestern New Jersey and northern Delaware. So very large, moderate risk, level three out of four for flash flooding there. Could see some rainfall amounts up to about six inches. So please stay weather aware and keep in mind that there is a really good risk for flash flooding today. I also want to note specifically out here in between Greensboro and Durham where we saw upwards of 11 inches of rainfall the other day from our tropical depression. So just keep in mind that those, um, you know, the ground out there is already saturated. They're already dealing with flash flooding still. Relief is still ongoing in that area. So there is a really high chance for catastrophic flash flooding in this area just simply because the ground is already so saturated and still actively flooding so just keep that in mind and unfortunately going into tomorrow it looks like we'll have the chance for flash flooding as well across much of North Carolina into portions of Virginia even into a small sliver of South Carolina we might have some isolated catastrophic flash flooding for tomorrow on Thursday but it doesn't look as bad as what today looks like out here in North Carolina and then going into Friday thankfully that risk does decrease although it is still there also want to mention the marginal back out there in South Dakota through Nebraska, Kansas could see some flooding there for today. Slight risk tomorrow. That could be a bit of an issue out there in eastern Nebraska, western Iowa. We'll keep a close eye on that. And then day three, that goes back down to a marginal swell. And then on day four, which is Saturday, there's a slight risk out in Oklahoma and southeastern Kansas for the potential of training thunderstorms. Also, flash flooding will be possible there. And then going on into Sunday, they downgrade to a marginal risk. So overall, a lot of flash flooding is still expected across much of the U.S. over the next three to five days with today being the potential for catastrophic flash flooding out there in the mid-Atlantic into portions of the northeastern U.S. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy. There is a chance for a live stream over the next three to five days as all of these severe weather events are going to be something to keep an eye on. Friday is probably the best chance for a live stream with that tornado threat in Nebraska and western Iowa, but I really could be live over any of the next few days. So just keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell and you're subscribed. That way you know when I go live or upload another video. And again, I appreciate you guys for watching. Stay safe, watch severe weather, and have a great rest of your Wednesday. Goodbye.